Welcome back to the shop. Today we are looking at a power solution for uh, radios with a little bit more power than the traditional QRP radios. Uh, radios like the uh, G90 or the uh, FX4CR that can transmit uh, up to 20 watts. Uh, most uh, power banks will be insufficient to drive these, uh, these radios, at least for 20 watts. So I got this uh, suggestion from uh, Jürgen over at the uh, European ham radio show. Uh, it's called the Nastima or Nastima. I don't know how you pronounce that. It's a, it's a Chinese product. Uh, this thing is a 12 volt, 6 amp hours and 72 watt hours uh, power brick or power bank, I guess. It's got a USB output. It's got a 12 volt output and a 9 volt output. And as it says on, uh, on the top, the uh, the uh, USB uh, output is for 5 volts to amps, so not really any sort of uh, smart charging solutions, but at least it will charge just about anything at 2 amps, uh, 5 uh, volts. Um, the 9 volt, the, the nine volt uh, output is 1.5 uh, amps, which is uh, actually quite perfect for the uh, QDX and uh, all the other Q uh, products from uh, Hans Summer, because they can usually be built to uh, to uh, work off 9 volts and 1.5 amp should be plenty. So having a, a dedicated 9 volt output is a very nice uh, feature of this uh, thing. And of course there is the 12 volt uh, output which is actually 10 to 14.6. So it's uh, fairly unregulated and uh, it's uh, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, so I'm guessing there's four of them since, since we end up at 14.6 uh, volts uh, maximum. We'll uh, have a look, we'll do uh, some capacity testing. It's supposed to be uh, 72 watt hours. Uh, I'll do a capacity test at two and a half amps and a capacity test at five amps on the Corad Kel 103. Uh, and uh, we'll have a look at how that works. And uh, when we get results of that, we'll uh, have a chat about uh, the charger and the cables and the connector that comes uh, with it. And we'll open it up and see what it looks like on the inside. But uh, first of all, let's... Uh, do the uh, power test. Sadly, the uh, 12 volt output, as you can see, is a normal barrel connector. Running five amps, at least for a, a prolonged period of time through that connector is probably not optimal, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it uh, turns out. So I will uh, run the power test and uh, I'll meet you back here once uh, we have some uh, graphs ready showing how, uh, how that worked. I have to say that went uh, well above what I uh, was uh, expecting to see from a fairly inexpensive uh, product of uh, eBay or AliExpress. I can't remember one of these. Um, I'll do some screen overlay so you don't have to look at the uh, the really small print out. But uh, as we can see, the first run I uh, I ran with the two and a half amps. Um, that uh, resulted in 6.15 amp hours or 77.11 watt hours, which is uh, well above what's uh, stated on, uh, on the unit. And uh, it ran uh, continuously for two hours and 30 minutes. So I think that's uh, pretty all right. Should be, uh, should be more than enough power to, to do uh, at least more than one activation at least. And uh, just to see how uh, well it worked uh, at the higher power draw, I did the exact same test only on uh, five amps. And uh, pretty much the, uh, the the numbers that you expected to double doubled, and the numbers that you expected to remain the same did remain the same. At five amps, I got uh, six point twenty one amp hours compared to the six point fifteen. Um, that's close enough to be a measuring error, I think. And also for the uh, uh, the watt hours, I got uh, seventy five point seven four uh, compared to seventy seven point eleven watt hours on at uh, two point five amp hours. That's an awful lot of numbers in a short while, but hopefully you'll get the idea from looking at the uh, at the uh, pictures on the screen. I'll uh, put them right next to each other so you can see the shape of the curve is uh, pretty much the same. Uh, you can also see that uh, uh, the voltage throughout the entire run is lower by uh, maybe half a volt or close to half a volt when running at five amps compared to two and a half amps. And that uh, tells me at least that there is a uh, some voltage drop, probably within the unit and maybe even in uh, my measuring uh, setup. But uh, either way, it stays above 12 volts for the uh, long, for a long, long, long time. So I, I don't think this is uh, going to be any sort of problem to use for uh, 20 watt radios like the G90 or the FX4CR. Let's have a look at what comes with the, the unit and what it looks like. 
first of all, uh, what surprises me is uh, when uh, when you look at this, it's got uh, one label side and it's got one completely black side. And I would expect that this was the uh, down side. <laughs> but when you look at the front, you see that uh, the text is written so that this is supposed to be on top. I find that strange, but I'm guessing, since this looks fairly symmetrical, that this is just a minor production error. And if we open it up, we might be able to turn the whole thing around. We'll see when we open it up later on. Um, other than that, as I said, it's got four LEDs that tells you the state of charge of this uh, thing. I was looking at it during the tests and uh, very unscientifically, it seems that they're uh, yeah, within reason, uh, they give you a fairly well a good idea. When two of them are lit, you have a, somewhere around 50% left. When one just one is lit, you have somewhere around 25%. So it gives you a fair idea. It's also got a physical switch, which I think is a very good idea for anything. All power banks should have that, so you can disconnect them. That's going to stop it from discharging or you spending any electricity, just sensing to see if the, something is uh, connected. Uh, what comes with the thing is a... Uh, is a charging brick. This is, I'll, I'll put an overlay of uh, the text on here so you can see it. But its uh, output is 14.6 uh, volt at 1.5 amps, which basically means that it should charge this from 0 to 100 in a little bit more than uh, four hours. It's its not going to be able to push the, uh, the, the 1.5 amps uh, all the way through the top, but a little bit more than four hours and it should fill this up when uh, when empty. When it comes to connectors, on the front side, the 12 volt output is a normal 5.5 millimeter barrel uh, connector. And uh, it comes with this fairly short wire with a 5.5 millimeter at each end, and that fits nicely in there. On this, on the other hand, I, I actually have never seen this uh, barrel connector before, but I, I looked at it. This is a four millimeter barrel connector. Basically the same thing as this, only four millimeters instead of 5.5. So. Uh, I had to order. Uh, luckily, I found on uh, AliExpress or eBay, once again, can't remember, I found uh, connectors, so I ordered five of them. I think that was about one and a half euros, uh, and uh, that was delivered to Norway. So, not really expensive, but I need to get some of these connectors to actually use this 9 volt thing for my uh, QDXs. That was the uh, connectors and uh, the wires that came with it. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. So we have a battery pack, yeah, this looks like four uh, cells. Let's have a look here. I guess these are this size. This is 32700 size uh, cells. And it seems to be basically these, and these uh, cells are also seven amp hours. So I'm guessing it's pretty much four of these cells in here. So let's, uh, let's continue. Let's see if it's, uh, is it? Is it glued? No, doesn't seem to be. I think I can take this out and uh, let's see. Yeah, the front panel is loose as well. So the theory that I can just flip this over to get to the label on the other side, that uh, that's probably gonna hold. Let's see if we can manage to take all this out without breaking anything. All right, maybe not, maybe it is glued. Yeah, feels like it. Yeah, I'm not gonna break that. Let's see if we can just flip this up. We can. Let's see. Maybe we can, let's try. No, no, we cannot. All right. Bad idea. Let's see if we can have a look at the electronics in here. See how that looks. Uh, getting some wires to the side and I'll, uh, I'll take a picture of this and uh, I'll show you on the screen so we can talk about what's on there. That's... Uh, actually a little bit interesting looking at this uh, schematic because uh, I'm not gonna try and do a full uh, big Clive here but uh, identifying the major components on uh, on this uh, printed circuit board could be cool and uh, 
up in the uh, top, uh, slightly to the right, you will see uh, four identical uh, components. These are in fact uh, P-channel advanced power MOSFETs, is uh, what the data sheets call them. The uh, part number is RU, Romeo Uniform 30L30M. And uh, I'm guessing these are what's handling uh, current limiting for uh, in, um, both uh, charge and uh, discharging. Because uh, as far as I can tell, these are the only power electronics uh, on this uh, on this PCB. There are some uh, more regular transistors uh, down in the uh, bottom left hand side. It's called uh, Q7 and Q6 and uh, Q5. There's some diodes and something. I'm guessing that's the voltage regulating uh, circuitry for the 9 volt output. But the really interesting part is that there is actually no charge controller or a discharge uh, uh, controlling circuit in, uh, on this uh, circuit board. The, the rather big, uh, or uh, maybe not big, but the, the component in the middle of the circuit board with uh, quite a few uh, uh, pins on it, that's just a regular microcontroller. It's, it's called the N32G031. I wonder who comes up with uh, these names for, um, for microcontrollers. But that's what it's called, and it's a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M0 uh, type uh, or uh, core uh, processor. Uh, fairly, as far as I can tell, it's fairly uh, regular setup with uh, peripherals and uh, whatnot. Uh, but uh, that means that there is no dedicated charge controller. Someone has actually written a charge controller software or firmware for that uh, chip, and that controls the MOSFETs and also the transistors for the voltage uh, controller, I would guess. Um, that's... On the one hand, that's pretty interesting, pretty cool. On the other hand, it's uh, a little bit scary. If there are bugs in this firmware, then uh, this could easily run the batteries all the way down. That's not as critical with the lithium iron phosphate as it is with so many other lithium uh, chemistries, but uh, still. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be charging this uh, power bank while I'm sleeping, knowing this. But other than that, it looks tidy. It looks as, um, as can be expected. I've had a quick look at the solder joints. It doesn't look like any of them are really bad. It's, I wouldn't call it beautiful. I think uh, if you went to school and you delivered this for a for a soldering test, you'd, you'd get a failing mark. But I think they're electrically sound, as far as I can tell. So, seems like a, an acceptable uh, product. I think I'm going to be happy with uh, using this for, uh, uh, let's see, a QRP Plus operations with the G90 or the FX4CR. Very nice product. Looking forward to bringing this out and uh, doing some operations. Haven't had the uh, G90 nor the uh, FX4CR out much lately, but uh, I have an antenna build that uh, I think will be very cool to try out for both of these radios. So we'll uh, see if we can uh, show you some of that in the future. Other than that, I think uh, that's it for today. Uh, if you like this sort of content uh, or are interested in uh, radio related content uh, in general, please consider subscribing. And if you like this video in particular, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you discovered something dumb that I did that I, or something that I should have done differently, please leave a comment. I'm uh, learning uh, a lot from the, the comments left under my videos. So if you have something to share, please do. Other than that, till next time, 7-3.